This is how I found my health super unlock after 20 years of research and 20,000 genes tested. Each person has one to six, or if you want, two or three to put it in the middle, highly unique unlocks that will only work for them, and this is exactly how to find them. This video or podcast, depending on where you're watching or listening, will only be available for free for 48 hours. It is otherwise reserved for MasterPass members. Check out the link in the description for the written article with references, as well as how you can find the video or podcast evergreen past the 48-hour period. If you've seen House MD, you may have seen Season 5, Episode 6, where House says to Wilson, Wilson, I need a genetic disease. And Wilson says, I'm sure you're carrying a few. And that is going to be the topic of this article, but not in the sense that Wilson meant it. Wilson was under the influence of the conventional wisdom that thinks that carrier status for genetic disease has no impact on your metabolism. In fact, that's why it's called carrier status, because you carry it and you can drop it off somewhere, but you can't get the disease. And that is fundamentally wrong. Before we start there, to put this all in context, there are basic things that we should all be doing for our health. Eat nutritious, largely whole food diet that is adequate in all the macronutrients and micronutrients, maintain a healthy body composition, live an active lifestyle with healthy movement patterns and plenty of outdoor time, get outdoor sunshine in the morning, avoid artificial light at night, include exposure to fire, let our bare skin touch the earth, experience the transitions between hot and cold that nature offers, sleep well, take bites of life only as big as you can chew, but always be chewing them, nourish positive relationships with our family and friends and a positive outlook within ourselves, and be mindful of avoiding excessive exposures to the toxins that we may encounter. And the list is not comprehensive. It goes on from there. And I say this only at the outset to say that if you're watching this video or listening to this podcast, you are almost certainly someone who has made an effort to to grab the low-hanging fruit. And this is what is not at all low-hanging fruit. It is that next-level unlock to get you to way beyond what you dreamed in your wildest imagination could be the actual next step. So I propose herein that most of us, in fact, likely all of us with very rare exceptions, have an idiosyncratic portion of what we need for optimal health and that this is far more likely to be driven by the presence of one or more rare metabolic disease genes discoverable only with whole genome sequencing Far more likely that than that it is to be driven by common polymorphisms that are accurately tested with services such as 23andMe. Now, that does not mean that just go get whole genome sequencing and you're straight. This approach is absolutely not replicated by whole genome sequencing and reading the reports. This approach is absolutely not replicated by getting a NutriVal and having it analyzed by a functional medicine doctor. Think of this as a completely unique approach to preventing house fires. Your house keeps catching fire. Conventional medicine, functional medicine, nutrigenomics, pharmaceutical companies, supplement companies, these are the firefighters, the ambulance, and the cleanup crew. And someone taking a list of 100 supplements is throwing 100 drops of water on the fire. Now, finding the two or three mutations that are orders of magnitude more important than everything else is finding the gas leak and the sparking wire that keep causing the fires. Now, specialists in particular inborn errors of metabolism are the electricians who could find the sparking wire or the the gas plumbing experts who could find the leak. But the problem is that to each expert, the wiring looks good enough to prevent a fire and the piping looks good enough to prevent a fire and never the right team is present altogether to find the interaction between the two that is bad enough to be causing constant fires. Now, to take this out of analogy land and bring it to something real, let's take a brief look at my own health. So I had a night and day transformation between neurological nightmare on a vegan diet and high-performance stability and sanity on a diet rich in organ meats. And I've known many ex-vegans, but I know very few almost none with such radical transformations as mine. And so I've spent 20 years wondering why this is until recently with no success. 
Now, I've suspected that there's something different about me that explains both that and why my neuromuscular health remains so sensitive to stress. So, for example, why did a single day of the antifungal terbinifin taken in 2017 give me the worst twitching of my life? Why did six weeks of it produce a twitching problem that no neurologist could diagnose, but that I myself could render completely asymptomatic with supplements, but supplements that I had to maintain for four and a half years until the problem was gone? Why did taking eggs and meat out of my diet and replacing them with shellfish for 40 days in early 2022 give me muscular weakness and trouble swallowing that disappeared as soon as I put the eggs and meat back in. Since 2017, I have occasionally made a deep dive into rare genes and biochemistry to help clients with highly unusual, chronic, intractable health problems, and I had suspected that applying this approach to myself one day would finally explain what seemed so different about me. Only in the last year have I actually moved forward to do exactly that. So I've identified two rare riboflavin-responsive mutations in the ACAD9 gene, as well as an assortment of genetic insults on the mitochondrial respiratory chain that together synergize to perfectly explain everything I've described above. These were only discoverable through the analysis of my whole genome sequencing raw data files and were not discoverable with any of the other genetic testing that I had done and were not laid out to me the way that I've laid them out to myself through the analysis of the raw data files by the whole genome sequencing company in their reports. Now, most of the past experiences with dietary changes could be explained by variations in my intake of riboflavin, pantothenic acid derivatives, and carnitine. And so being able to interpret that, I then leveraged this knowledge to not simply explain past problems, but to obtain better and better health by addressing the mutations in a targeted way. Riboflavin supplementation alone has abolished my seasonal allergies, dramatically improved my body composition, and increased my motivation, mental health, productivity, and energy. In fact, over the last month, through the biochemical optimization experiments as they are evolving in real time, I have increased my energy intake from 2,400 calories a day to 3,400 calories a day as my waist keeps going down in an effort to stop myself from losing too much body fat. (laughs) And this is despite the fact that I was stable eating 2,400 calories a day for months with no change in my weight or waist circumference prior to this stage. So I am purposefully experimenting on myself to generate insights that will help others. And so I'm moving very slowly to collect maximal data. And now I'm in a phase that I've just started that I expect to reverse two decades of chronic discomfort from muscle tension. Were I working with someone I, on this, you know, if I, if I were my own client and I was not trying to put myself through experiments to show scientific principles and insights that can help other people, this is something where we could have gone boom, 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 boom from the beginning. As I've realized how responsive my own health is to this approach, I've applied it to more and more of my clients. So here are some of the results that I've achieved with this approach. One of my clients had been completely unable to have blood drawn in the fasting state and could only have it drawn while laying down or else she'd faint. After addressing rare biotin-responsive mutations, she's become more fasting tolerant and just had blood drawn sitting up for the first time in her adult life. We believe she is well on her way to tolerating blood drawn in the fasting state. One of my clients takes Humira for Crohn's disease, but at the cost of neurological side effects that the doctors say are not possible to happen. We identified an apparent defect in lysine metabolism, and addressing it appears to have improved her skin and energy levels, and to allow her to tolerate pushing out the monthly Humira dose by two weeks without any gastrointestinal side effects. We'll be seeing soon if fully addressing this issue can allow her to get off the Humira entirely and not worry about neurological problems or gastrointestinal issues. And... Now, finally, we've also seen that she has this combined with a complex three disorder in the mitochondrial respiratory chain, which which has now opened up additional avenues toward fully optimizing her biochemistry and making her as healthy as she could possibly be. One of my clients was dealing with insomnia, anxiety, neuropathy from benzos, SSRIs, and beta blockers from conventional doctors. 
and hormonal treatments from functional medicine doctors that worked until they didn't, and had tried supplementation that strategies using phosphatoserine and inositol that made him tremendously worse. This client came to me for my advice on methylation, but after identifying a problem in complex one of the mitochondrial respiratory chain, we identified restricting simple carbs as a major way to achieve the first reduction of symptoms that he had experienced in years. One of my clients was with had long-standing insomnia responsive only to sleep drugs and achieved months of seven to eight hours of sleep per night through glutathione infusions after we identified an apparent defect in glutathione synthesis. One of the great drawbacks of this approach when doing it gradually in this manner is the massive delays in achieving these results. For example, in Energy Metabolism Governs Everything, I posited that a respiratory chain disorder was causing one of my clients to require much higher than normal doses of vitamin A and zinc was causing paradoxical coexistence of vitamin A deficiency and toxicity symptoms, and was driving her apparent autoimmune condition. It later turned out that I was right on the money. The client had a complex 3 disorder traceable to six homozygous mutations in the mitochondrial cytochrome B gene. The whole genome sequencing reports, though, get this, did not report this at all. All. It was my analysis of the raw data file that found six homozygous mutations that lined up perfectly with a functional test of the respiratory chain. And this is my point. You cannot replicate this approach by getting whole genome sequencing and reading the reports. I had started working with this client in March of 2022 and formed this hypothesis in April of 2023. The time that it took her to get the necessary labs run led me to only finally develop an action plan for this for her in the past month. So what caused this delay? The fact that I, one, only pursued rare defects in energy metabolism when all other explanations had been exhausted, and two, left her on her own to find doctors to sign off on her labs. I have fixed that. So recent research that I'll review below has shown that everyone has one or two such defects, and I show my math below to suggest that each person actually has between one and six nutritionally actionable defects in energy metabolism. This does not mean that everyone is walking around with one to six serious illnesses. Rather, it means that everyone has one to six idiosyncrasies of energy metabolism, and addressing them for some people will resolve chronic health problems, and in other people will simply make them healthier than they already are. For some, it's a solution to a longstanding problem. For others, it's the highest return unlock for maximal wellness, performance, and longevity. For this reason, I created a program that will start by getting all of the relevant labs ordered for you and will systematically identify the highest return idiosyncrasies from the beginning, giving you a highly individualized nutrition supplement plan to address them within 12 to 14 weeks. You can sign up for a call at biooptthealth.com to see if my new biochemical optimization program is right for you. The remainder of this video and podcast is only available for 48 hours. If you want to watch it or listen to it after it is gone, you can go to the link in the description, and there you can access the written and fully referenced article that this is based on, and you can access the evergreen video and podcast for MasterPass members. This is what we're going to cover in the rest of this We're going to cover, so we started with the analogy of the house fire. We're going to go to an analogy that's more for the nerds as we start to dive deeper into the scientific rationale for this. And that analogy is going to be debugging the operating system. We're going to talk about why this approach is not conventional wisdom, why rare metabolic disease genes defining exactly what they are, how common they are, why conventional wisdom calls them carrier status, and the limitations of that approach. And then we're going to talk about why heterozygosity for these is the key to longevity. We're going to look at heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, heterozygous biotinidase deficiency, and heterozygous Wilson's disease as examples. But then we're going to dive deep into the concept of synergistic heterozygosity, which is the most mind-blowing and most important concept in genetics that has gotten almost zero attention. And we're going to talk about why synergistic heterozygosity is vastly more common than traditional homozygosity. I will be conservative to say that 98 to 99% of serious illnesses that have no diagnosis are cases of synergistic heterozygosity that are, have, have half of two existing illnesses copied and pasted together, and almost none of them are brand new diseases, which is why everyone trying to discover the causes of rare diseases that are not diagnosed is completely on the wrong track. And we're going to talk about 
we're gonna, then going to take that back to Wilson's disease and look how the 25 to 5% of people who are heterozygous for Wilson's disease can have very serious interactions with other things in energy metabolism that make that heterozygosity manifest into something that looks more like conventional homozygous Wilson's disease. We're going to talk about why rare metabolic disease genes require whole genome sequencing to analyze, but why most genetic and why most genetic information is noise, but why whole genome sequencing is not enough. And we're going to talk about the high-hanging fruit unlock for optimizing wellness performance and longevity that is debugging the OS or putting out the cause of the house fires, why that's not just a solution to chronic illnesses that have no diagnosis. It is also the solution to the people who are healthy and want to be the healthiest they can possibly be. Because if they're not making you unhealthy, they're still the limiting bottlenecks in your metabolism. And then we're going to talk about the general approach, how you do debug the OS. Okay.